Mamba yanga brother here, Ian. He's a Burkina Bay. That's what we call the people who stay in Burkina Faso. So we are here at the Tama Sankara Memorial in Ouagadougou, Burkina. actually one man who uh, young Africans should be taught about. And this one man who actually hated corruption with a passion. He could even arrest his own family. They were involved in corruption. So this one man who refused to have an air conditioner in his office. is the man who said, as long as all the Burkina Bees, the people of Burkina Faso, don't have air conditioners in their offices, why must I have an air, I have an air condition? wish many young people can be taught about these leaguers. I call him the greatest revolutionary Africa has ever produced. He said, if you want to know what is imperialism, look inside your plate. For he who feeds you controls you. You can negotiate on a table where uh, you're owing the people you're negotiating with money. The people when you are negotiating with, they are feeding you, then automatically you don't have an upper hand in those negotiations. Sankara. So for those who don't know, actually the current president, Captain Ibrahim Traore, is trying to follow in his footsteps. He's trying to do what he is, what his men achieved. Because this man achieved in almost more than less than three years. What many African leaders failed to achieve in more than 20 years. He was able to send a lot of students overseas to go and study. He was able to empower women. He was able to vaccinate kids. So he's actually a very powerful legacy of an African leader. There's one story that I've read about. That actually, when he, after he died, his possessions was just one old car, a guitar, a refrigerator, and a very small house. In fact, after he became president, he actually decided that all the ministers, uh, the government must sell all the big Mercedes Benzes that were given to ministers by the previous president. All the ministers were bought small Renault cars as a way of showing that he was a man of the people. The priority was to take care of the people. The priority was to make sure that the people were fed, the people were benefiting. So I'm here signing off here in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. <laughs> Thomas Sankara was shot. The day he was killed, he was actually inside this building. October the 15th, 1987. This is where the people came to come and shoot him. He was in this building, in these offices here. So this is the meeting room where Thomas Sankara was having a meeting. The day he was killed. He was actually with six military guys or bodyguards and five civilians who were advisors. So the guys, the photos you see here at the back, it's the photos of the guys that were with him when he was killed.
This is where Thomas Sankara was having a meeting the day he was killed. As he was inside, I'll point to you now, the commandos, the military guys came from the background direction that you're seeing there. As they arrived, they shot one bodyguard who was outside. At that time, Thomas Sankara was sitting inside this building here having a meeting. When he had that gun shot, he told the bodyguards and the advisors that he was having a meeting with to stay inside. He said to them, don't come out because I'm the one that they are looking for. As he came out, he came out and stood here. You'll see where they put the flowers here in the background. He stood there, and after standing there, he started talking to the people who came to kill him, the soldiers. As he was talking to them, one of the killers said to the other ones, don't talk to him, don't allow him to talk, because if you allow him to talk, he'll convince us not to perform, to do the mission that we are coming here to do, which is to kill him. After that, they shot him, after shooting him, this is where he fell here. Where the flowers are at the back of me, this is where he fell. As he fell, he raised his fist in the air and said the struggle will continue. So basically, this is the background about Isadore Noel Thomas Sankar, an African revolutionary who hated corruption with a passion. A revolutionary who, unfortunately, many young people in Africa don't know about. Because, you know, mainstream media and all this information sources all over the world. They are spreading the narrative that African leadership is corrupt. But they're not telling stories about leaders with integrity. Leaders who hated corruption so much that they could even arrest their own family if they were involved in corruption. So this was a powerful revolutionary that I'm hoping that one day young people will try and get a little bit of the story that I'm trying to share here. Try and understand that indeed we had leaders with integrity in this continent. Leaders who were thinking beyond themselves. Leaders who were understanding that as a leader, your number one priority is to take care of the people that you are leading. So I'm signing out here in Wakaduku, Burkina Faso. So this is my brother here, who's a tour guide here at the memorial of Thomas Sankara. So my brother, I just want to ask now, uh, Thomas Sankara's legacy currently in Burkina Faso, do you think there's still young people, are, uh, young people are continuing with his teachings and his legacy? Have you understood? The manner that people continue to do in the same way as Thomas Sankara, the new generation, is there people who, according to you? No, the people, for being like Thomas Sankara, it's too deep. But the people try to imitate être comme Thomas Sankara. You know, my brother summed it up very nicely and said, mm -hmm. Thomas Sankara was a poor president with a rich mind. That's very powerful. So this man he was a president, but when he died, he left only a bicycle, a, a guitar, a freezer, and a small house, and a motorbike. Even her, his, his wife was more rich than her. So his wife ended up having more money than him. Thank you.